the founder and CEO and editor-in-chief of the 20-year-old Indian Television.com group. Our biggest property, as I've been saying in various virtual roundtables and fireside chats, is telechecker.com, which is a direct-to-consumer site, which generates close to a billion views a year and has 100 million unique viewers. Then there is indiantelevision.com, the, uh, consu- the, the industry uh, vertical which targets cable TV, satellite, uh, content creation, media, advertising, marketing, brands, et cetera, et cetera. It's the oldest property of the group. We also have uh, radioandmusic.com, which focuses on the FM radio and the music industry, as well as at the uh, radio fan, the guy who follows radio jocks and loves to hear what's going on on radio, uh, as well as the music uh, fan. Uh, finally, we have animationexpress.com, which is the world's third largest animation, visual effects, comics, and gaming destination, which produces the Kids Animation and More Summit, which is about to produce uh, games, esports, and more next month, focusing on the gaming and uh, eco- gaming and esports ecosystem in India, and maybe some international participants. Uh, apart from that, it's behind a lot of initiatives. Indiantelevision.com produces uh, uh, the Indian Tele Awards under the brand of ITV 2.0, which is a production arm. We're producing close to about a thousand videos uh, a month, at least, uh, under the group itself, which, uh, you know, we have uh, more than a million followers on all our social media and media handles. Uh, this apart, uh, we run uh, real world conferences, <clears throat> which are now becoming virtual. Vidnet, which is for the OTT ecosystem. It's in its fifth year. Attracts an audience of 1,000 uh, at least paying audiences. Uh, there's Video and Broadband Summit. Vidnet uh, targets uh, OTT, uh, content, business, distribution, technology. Uh, and you know we have people participating in that from all over the world. Uh, Vidnet, uh, Video and Broadband Summit targets the cable TV, DTH, and the broadband and telco ecosystem. Uh, We also produce a content hub, which again attracts about a thousand uh, participants paying money to be a part of it. It focuses on creating content for TV, film, OTT, and for the short form uh, content on YouTube, etc, etc. That's in its sixth year. Uh, Finally, uh, we've been converting most of what we're doing onto the uh, virtual uh, world. And today, uh, it's lovely to have a great panel. Uh, It's about communicating in times of crisis communicating in uh, times of revival and in normal times. The new coronavirus is a killer with a crowbar, breaking and entering human cells with impunity. It hitchhikes across continents, carried on coughs and careless hands, driven by its own urgent necessity to survive. It has a gregarious side that makes it hard to resist. It loves the party. The persistent social climber claims its victims around the world by riding on moments of the most innocent of human interactions a shared laugh, a conversation, an embrace, and it is a liar. SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVD-19, often misleads the body's immune systems, and it has been wreaking havoc in India. Today, our country is the second most infected nation globally, and on course to become the most infected nation by probably end next month or mid next month. As the country is opening up district by district, of course, there's an economic necessity which is driving this. The economy and many of its citizens are cash starved or cash strapped. So the economic engine has to start chugging, money has to move around. And this urgency is going to drive, give further impetus to the virus to continue on its infecting and killing spree, creating more fear or sheer acceptance of it as a, as a karma as we Indians are wont to. The virus is going to be around for a while and we are going to be like this only, working from home partly or maybe fully or working partly Uh, at home, partly in the office, until then. Some say three months is what we'll continue to be like this. Some some people say it's, you know, it could continue until we attain herd immunity. Herd immunity. Some say six months. Some say when a vaccine becomes available. Some say nine months. Some say a year, year and a half. We don't know when. Communications is the heart, is at the heart of the well-run organization. And its top management understands that. The entire organization conveys a single message so that there's no confusion in anyone's mind. Internal employees, managers, external stakeholders, whether investors, financial institutions, banks, stock markets, vendors, suppliers, the media, the authorities and government officials, local or central, and finally, the consumer who buys the product. Communications metal comes into the forefront during a crisis, but it is also evident during a normal day when things are going all right. 
and to discuss what role communication played during the lockdown and what role it can play with the opening up and going forward we have a very well represented panel from various industries some digital first some real world as well as from some leading agencies to begin with i'll just go with the alphabetical introduction we have akshara lalwani who's a founder and ceo of communicate india welcome akshara are you there can you unmute yourself hello akshara thanks anil thanks for having me um uh, and this great panel here thanks very Thank much you. Thank you. Then we have Aman Gupta, managing partner and co-founder of Spag Asia. Welcome, yeah, Aman. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us, and really good to have this conversation going. Great. Welcome, uh, Deepshika Dharmaraj. Uh, somebody I've known for many years. She's the chief executive officer of Genesis BCW and member of the BCW India board. I specifically stated that. Welcome, <laughs> Deepshika. Thank you, Anil. Hi. and lovely to see you again after so many years and lovely to see all the others on this group also some very old friends and some new friends so looking forward to this chat with everyone thank you thank you uh dimple kapoor she's a vice president and group head corporate communications and pr at the piramal group welcome dimple thank you anil very happy to be part of this conversation so thank you for having me here thank you Great. looking forward to the discussions thank you Kavita Lakhani, Executive Director, Golan and Opinion, Mullen Low Lintas Group. Welcome, Kavita. Such a pleasure being here with all of you all, and I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Minari Shah, I've got that right, right? Minari, right? Or is it Minari? Minari. It's Minari. Minari Shah, the Director of Public Relations at Amazon India. Welcome, Minari. Thanks, Anil. It's great to be here. Looking forward to this. my pleasure parvez modak executive director strategy and insight at msl india welcome parvez 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 i'm trying to figure that out yet actually <laughs> please you can call me parvez or parvez it doesn't matter but parvez would be better yes great thank you thank you for uh, having me over and looking forward to engaging with everybody thank you very much rohan kanchan the managing director strategy and consulting at weber shanwick welcome rohan Anil, thank you and welcome. Good evening to everyone else. Finally, not the least, Sheetal Singh, the Associate Director, Corporate Affairs, Flipkart. Welcome, Sheetal. Thanks, Anil. Very happy to be here with everyone. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. So you know, to get the ball rolling, I'm going to throw a question up in the air, and uh, uh, let's hope everyone takes a good shot at it. Do you believe communications got a chance to play an effective role during this pandemic? Who's going to begin? Uh, should we begin alphabetically then, or would we begin with Sheetal right now? Sheetal, do you think corp communications had an effective role to play? Of course, I think um, uh, there's a saying that you know never let a good crisis go waste. I think corporate communication uh, professionals, this has been uh, uh, you know uh, the biggest moment uh, you know to prove their metal on the table. Not to say that you know. Um, all of us haven't been doing that but i think uh uh it's it's is to say the least that you know you've had a role to play you've we've had the biggest role to play i would say we'll get to that so rohan the very think, fact the yeah. very fact tanil that uh, possibly i'm i'm very certain that most of my counterparts here would would agree that uh, i possibly didn't the entire 9 months that was spending of the years work in 3 months i think <laughs> uh, in terms of the amount of time and so uh, and and so critically if you look at it and i'm sure that's true for everyone in most industries uh, i think the sure amount of time that has gone in uh, during this time working with clients i think the more importantly what i realized was was for everyone at least in the initial phase that crystal ball gazing itself was unclear you looked in you didn't know completely unprecedented uh and everyone was looking for some form of help some some form of support uh and therefore even looking at for us for instance because we are a global firm looking at insights from china as they evolved what were those insights so coming in i think that advisory piece of working with clients became a lot more critical uh the fact that you could rethink and and relook where the consumer was consuming some of that information became so much more critical so i think our Uh, the access points changed our role in terms of consulting with clients changed uh, and and by default therefore in terms of 
how is it that you're going to work out those early months of the of of covid uh, became that much more critical for each one of us to to try and figure out uh, and I'm, I'm i'm quite certain that the role of the communicator changed because your audiences in the past for instance there was so much of a focus on external uh, and covid taught you that the internal was probably as much important at least in the early phase of that communication as the external world was uh, and therefore relooking revisiting the way that you were speaking uh, changed and and therefore i think in many ways if you had to look at our role uh, it 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 got enhanced there was a lot more to be done and you also had to probably revisit the way that you were doing something for so long great thank you for that insight parvez i'm going to ask each of you the same question parvez you're on a mute yeah, there's no doubt about it that it is um, it is indeed important for i mean the role which communication plays in today's day and age uh, but the whole fact of the matter is um, you know covid has compressed timelines right completely and the biggest role which which communication plays is to add credibility to the content i think that's the that's a crux of the fact that yes um, it is of course plays a very important role by adding credibility and especially if you look at the other forms of communication let's say the paid forms of communication they still are intrusive but our industry lends that credibility and gives that assurance which a lot of stakeholders are looking for so in short yes in in this context thanks for that uh, minari your perspective i think it validated or reinforced a lot of things that we already believe in uh working across audiences using technology to communicate work across media consistent messaging but i don't think there's been a point in time when a part of the world were facing the same thing um with 65000 plus employees uh dealing with are we going to office not going to office what is the changes i think in the initial part all of that and then we were a company in a situation where our customer needed us and depended on us more than ever so we were very conscious about the responsibility that we had to be there for our customers but at the same time to make sure that our employees were safe our operations were working safely so you know there was a hustle to make sure that we could deliver safely our people could work safely so i think at multiple points from customers to employees to um, you know uh our teams uh, as much as policy makers there were a lot of uh, i think the the governments and policy makers were trying to decide how to handle this extremely complex situation which none of us could have even imagined so as they were trying to deal with it we had to work with them to make everything available and uh, work across media there were newspapers not getting delivered so you know working across media uh, working through the messages um working through global challenges um, i don't think i don't think as a company we ever questioned our relevance but uh, i think it all came into play in such a huge big manner in these months great fantastic kavita no i was just going to go next after minari because uh, you know i think nobody is debating or i think we are completely unanimous in the fact that you know communication has a huge role to play at any time whether it's during a crisis or when it's not a crisis you know but i think the role that uh, you know because of the complexity and the fact that it's an unprecedented uh, you know much as i don't want to use this word because we've used it too much but this is a situation it was something that we never had imagined would happen and it's happened having said that what is it that you know all of us as individuals or as you know uh, professionals were expecting from governments or when we had to communicate with our clients i think one main important thing was education to know what was happening around us to actually understand any form of you know uh, information validated information was very welcome because we had no idea what's coming you know just to understand what's happening in the world around us and how to deal with it or to get any learnings so education was the first role that communication has played all throughout the second one was all about you know i mean uh, like a, a few of the others just said you know it was all about the internal audiences you know 
you had we are all uh, especially india uh, as a country we've always been together in our offices we work together for the very first time you know in our i say in our careers in our lifetimes we were suddenly kind of thrown apart and made to kind of you know work uh, using technology it's a very very uh, you know different situation to be in it's it's something that you're not used to you know and hence at that point in time the most important thing that uh, that kind of you know, the role of communication is to engage and i think every everybody wanted that engagement because that's how you felt like you were together you know you were still together trying to you know understand a situation or trying to help a client or trying to actually work towards a common goal which was maybe a community goal you know so second one was engagement and the third one you know which most leader brands i think uh if they managed to do it was to actually show empathy you know because uh, all throughout you know that hasn't been uh, a mainstay for all brands you know and they've always been communicating but sometimes you know they've been focusing more on the business but for the first time i think every or most brands most people individuals felt that you know what they felt very very strongly about what was happening it was something that was impacting not one person not one family not one country but the whole world together so you know that that feeling of empathy was so so important it needed to be communicated very very clearly whether it was to your internal audiences or to your clients you know so i can't help saying that you know communication took a different form communication was there always you know but now it took a very different form uh, you know during the corona or corona virus time great thank you for that dimple yeah um i think there was never a question on you know uh, whether communication was vital uh, even before covid so we are a conglomerate with about eight businesses varied businesses across 30 countries and we have two foundations so we've always been busy and at the core of you know at the crux of all of the things that have happened even before covid but what happened during covid was very interesting is that we came together uh, even closer and worked so beautifully as a team i think that um, you know across businesses across geographies everyone was communicating whether it was day whether it was night it just didn't matter these were the initial few months right i think everyone was really questioning where is the me time um now i think over the you know last few months things have settled in and we've sort of found our own rhythm to you know uh, space things out but the initial few months i think was a stellar example of what communications can do both internally to keep the employees engaged motivated connected you know uh, allay their anxieties make sure that so we also are in pharmaceuticals which is which was and is deemed an essential services all through the covid lockdown globally right and then the fear of contracting covid and contagion at your uh, workplaces dealing with not just employee anxieties but also partner anxiety so we started our actually area of impact expanded in these months to make sure that we were working with different teams to uh, meet different objectives it therefore in this um covid vuka world uh, you know we've actually been faced with volatility uncertainty complexity different uh, governments had different guidelines and they were changing as the weeks went by even we changed right uh, every week was okay we opening up we not opening up opening at certain state so working with those um you know changing dynamics but i think what really came through was how beautifully comms works not just you know uh, internally but also with the external world the other thing that really came out for um, not just us but i think as an industry and as as a you know community is there was more authentic com- communications that were going on you know media wasn't interested in you winning an award or you know uh, something which was perhaps um which was deemed as a trifle in these times there was more authenticity more seriousness to the kind of news that was relevant to the you know to your different stakeholders and to target audiences and um i think the other thing that really came through was people were a little more patient um you know we weren't really chasing di- guidelines we were being more thoughtful 
to see what was going to be more impactful. So I think this whole journey since the COVID lockdown has really been able to bring that clarity. It always was there, but I think just putting the focus on what truly matters, do that and the others can, you know, it's good to do, but not a must do. So these, these few months have really, I think, not just um, uh, enabled us to bring in a little more focus and clarity, but I've seen that for many other organizations as well. And um, I think also exemplary has been the, you know, the way the agencies and the corporates, uh, the corporate teams have worked together to enable many such, you know, very, very challenging situations. So for example, we did a press conference during COVID and this had to be a virtual um, press conference, right? A mm -hmm. lot of media are still not very comfortable with that. And then you had these issues of who's going to ask their questions first, managing all of that. Um, but this is going to be the new normal and, you know, for a, for a significant time to come. I think we're all learning um, and we're all finding that, you know, once we've absorbed that this is going to be uh, how things work, we've all been extremely effective. Um, and I think that's, that's really the highlight is uh, things that we thought were not possible moving to the digital platform and actually doing everything remotely. We've actually been not just effective, we've done, done it very successfully. Wow. That was quite inspiring, by the way. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Uh, uh, it was pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, on to uh, Dipshika. Um, you know, after everyone has said so much, there's, there's, there's sure so what much more. Dipshika, <laughs> yeah. Dipshika, there's a I lot. agree with all, all of what everybody has said, and I won't spend more time talking about that. I think for me, uh, what was interesting is how did communications actually change or manage what was required to be done? And the three things that stood out hugely for me uh, when I look back at the last six months, the first one was really tackling every challenge with a creative mindset, thinking through on what is the problem. So we have some, you know, 175 plus clients. So what are the challenges of our clients and how can we creatively help them solve their problem? I'll be very honest, scopes of work and what are you mandated for, mandated for, everything was out of the window. We just said, look, we are here to partner with you. Let's sit down. Let's look at your challenges and how can we help you in this whole situation? And I, I think one of the panelists mentioned about how well we closely came together as teams and got through this together. So that was the first thing, working creatively at problem solving. The second one, which stood out for me hugely, was agility. We could not say, I'll come back to you in 10 days with a plan. It doesn't work, didn't work, at least not in the last six months. Now, slowly, we've settled into a more sort of rhythm with it. Then it was, we need it tomorrow or we need it now. So agility with just coming up with what do we need to do, one. Agility with different kinds of media. And I think the other panelists have also talked about it. Traditional media was gone. I mean, overnight, it had disappeared from our lives. And we, of course, had all been talking about moving to online and digital, and, you know, talking about doing it in 10%, 15%, but suddenly it was 100% of our communication. So how do you manage that? Uh, which required, therefore, a lot of um, upgrading of skills of our own teams to be able to deal with that. So in addition to all the work that we were doing with our clients, which had expanded, we were also simultaneously making sure our people were able to have the right skills to be able to help our clients. And that again came under agility of our people and our teams. And working from home, of course, didn't make it any easier because you know people had various challenges at home. They had home chores to also look at and therefore work also. Which brings me to the third one, which was doing all of this with a very empathetic, and a positive mindset. And I think that became the key for all of us in the organization that this is not the time to pull up your people or pull up your teams, but actually to sort of work with them there in the trenches and handhold them, understand the challenges that they are going through, both personal and professional, and really work along with them. And to help this, we actually started a very interesting program, which, was, which has been running for earlier also. It was called the Growth Mindset Above the Line Thinking Program. And it came, so, came in helpful so strongly at this time because 
uh, it helped people see a more positive, brighter side to what was going on. And I think that as leaders, it was our responsibility to help people see that. So for me, I think those are the three things that really stood out for communicators. And I must say, overall, as an industry, we came together beautifully. And I, I don't know if you're aware, Anil, you know, there is this, we have this industry association called the PRCI. It was so wonderful. I mean, you know, all of us are competitors, right? And But every week on a Friday morning for one hour, we were all on a call, chatting, talking, saying, hey, what's happening? How are you dealing with it? How can I help you? How can we help each other? Learning from each other. So the coming together of uh, people was another big, big takeaway from this. And I think we've all benefited hugely from this also. I'll come uh, to the benefits after this. Yes, I'm gonna, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's a good, good learnings overall. And I think communication has come clearly at the front and people understand the importance and relevance of it completely. Even if they didn't earlier, I don't think there's any doubt in their mind now. Great, thank you for that. Aman, over to you. Uh, okay, yeah, just, yeah, so. So I mean, I think I would look at it from kind of a three phases, the way I think this whole thing has evolved. So the phase one, when it actually hit us, uh, the thought process was the business continuity and the sustainability of the business, both for the agencies and both for the clients. And I think the clients were looking like, you know, what for me is more critical, is it communicating internally, externally, talking to the government officials, because nobody really knew what has hit us. So I think the first three months, all of us was just trying to figure out, can we continue with our business, how we adapt to our new realities, and how do we ensure that we are able to sustain uh, I think the second phase was then we like, okay, now we know this is something which we will have to live with. And that's when this whole aspect of using technology, re-looking really at the way we think of the channel strategy, uh, really focusing on creative content and a storytelling, because that was always there. It's just that sometimes the channels used to take a larger scope in our thinking, but I think we all went back to the basics that if you can tell a good story, to your audience, then it will flow of its own. So I think that particular aspect allowed us to repurpose the agency for the, for the business impact of the client. And I think that was the phase two. And I think now where we are, and, and as we are conversing today, I think we are all now looking at what the new realities would look like. What is the agency of the future may look like? What would be the needs of the clients uh, would look like. And as we can see right now, so there are a couple of things which I would say brought in the change much faster than what would have happened if COVID would not have happened. So one is the, the digital first. You know, uh, as an agency, uh, we kind of work a lot in the pharma and the healthcare sector. That's kind of a core specialization to us. And as an industry which is very regulated, which is you know, really leading from a from a life perspective. And I think Dimple might sort of, you know, sort of reflect you know, as a part of Nicholas that here, how you communicate is much more sensitive, right? And how do you therefore put that kind of a content on a digital platforms becomes much more, uh, you know, relevant and much more sensitive also. So bringing the whole digital uh, as a part of the, the thinking at the core of uh, your channel strategy was a big thing. Uh, the second thing was that during this time, do you want to really communicate what from a business perspective? Because you need it to be talking from an empathy because there is a pandemic going outside. You still need to run your business, but you need to have a balance between what is you're talking about from your business perspective versus what you want to talk about what's happening around in the world. Do you want to really use the pandemic to tell a story or do you want to really sort of be talking to somebody else as an audience. So I think that whole strategic thinking per se uh, changed. And I think the biggest thing which I saw was that the time which was required earlier to develop a strategy versus the time we were now taking was much more higher. So I think all of us over the last six months would have doubled the number of hours which are going in, you know, working along with the clients and it's both ways. The clients are putting the same number of hours as what we are. Uh, to deliver uh, uh, the maximum out here. So the, the investment, the energy, uh, the whole resourcing part has really gone up. The, the whole way the communication happens has changed. 
And I believe this is something which is changed not just for the now, but this is the way how the communication will happen in the future. And thanks. Uh, last but not the least, Akshara. I think everybody has pretty much covered it, but I think it's extremely important to talk about what finally is communication, right? At the core, it's the transfer of information, whether you're talking about externally or internally. How are we going to harness that positively for the development of humanity? And for that, you just basically need three Cs, which is clarity. What do you want to communicate? From the perspective of what's the worst case scenario for a client, right? And preempting that. Is there an opportunity also there? Is there a silver lining there that we need to benefit from? Also collaboration, right? I think the vendor agency role is gone. It's all about partnerships and community. And I think we at Communicate have always been digitally native. So we've already seen this change coming, but COVID sort of has amplified that and had a, us accept it and adapt or perish. So I think, I mean, everyone said, said their piece and I think I agree with all and I think it's pretty much all covered, but that's my two bits. Fantastic. So, so now, you know, uh, any, any, you know, I'd like each of you to say three important learnings I'll have had, which I'm going to carry on with going forward. Three important learnings. I'll begin with them in the middle with Dimple now. Okay. So I'm going to have to do the thinking on my feet. So first one was don't sweat the small stuff. We realized that if it's not critical, get rid of it, right? Um, secondly, um, we realized you didn't need one-hour meetings. So now meetings last 15, 20 minutes, and if we can wrap it up, 10 minutes, right? Uh, I think we found ways to work smarter and seamlessly. Um, the third learning, uh, especially for um, you know, us as a conglomerate was um, maintaining, we always had, um, you know, transparency and building trust has always been critical for us. But um, just given that we were in different time zones, there were 30 countries that we were actually, you know, liaising in different continents, just making sure that there was cohesiveness in the communications. What it meant was that when the chips are down, you know, the communications team, the us at the corporate team, so we are a corporate team, and of course, there are uh, businesses and, and the foundation, but really when the chips are down, we came together and we were part of the business, right? Um, and which really, this was a beautiful demonstration of a crisis, which had three legs to it. One was, of course, it's a global healthcare crisis. The second is it's an economic crisis. It had many fold, many fold effects on um, not just economy, on livelihoods, uh, you know, migrant labors, there were issues. We deal with all of them, right? Um, yeah. Salary cuts, cuts internally, layoffs. Yeah. Yes, yes. All of those are sensitive and all of them uh, touch each one of us in, in many ways. So there's uh, healthcare, there's political and, uh, sorry, economic. And then the third thing was political, right? People were shutting boundaries and saying, no, no, we're going to source locally, blah, blah, blah. And we are a global organization. It impacted us, you know, in manifold impact. But that made us so much more nimble. Uh, someone mentioned agility in bringing together strategy. I think there wasn't time to really think strategy. It was really a time when you should have done your strategy and you're thinking way back and you should have seen it all come together, at least for us. We saw it all come together right now in the crisis, initial few months. We were deploying exactly what we had been saying before, but in a different form and, and just making it even more nimble, agile. Um, and, and the other thing that we really never lost sight of, because especially during the COVID uh, crisis, we have a foundation that really is founded on the basis of a PPP strategy, which is a public private partnership. It really embodies that. And we have a create, we've created a platform that brings in, you know, different um, partners. So we have a, you know, um, partnership with Rockefeller Foundation, with Bill and Melinda Gates. And what we did beautifully with the government, and I will give due credit to the government, that they just pulled out all stops to make sure that we were pr protecting, when I say we, it's the, you know, the government, the, um, the country was protecting its senior citizens because they were the most impacted in the initial phases. Of course, now you see that the numbers are hitting even the 40s and the 30s. 30 year olds but initially it was 60 plus and so through our foundation we pushed out awareness campaigns primary healthcare is something that we were always doing we really ramped up started working in 112 aspirational districts of india 
and that's really literally covering you know most of india this is and when i say aspirational districts for those that aren't aware of the topic uh, you know the term it is the most remote and desolate sections and districts of india that you can even think of you can't even sometimes reach there by car or by uh, you have to walk sometimes to those so we were working in those hand in hand with the government and some of the impact numbers that we've seen have been absolutely phenomenal and we never ever let up on the communications on our foundation and you know really our tenet at pervel the lessons lessons temple the lessons what lessons really? and you got the lesson and my lesson was and i said it in the first sentence is that our strategy has been you know really really we had a chance to play that out during this crisis is how effective it is to be how important is it to be effective during crisis to have your core strategy um don't lose that right and you evolve with evo- uh, changing dynamics but don't lose your core strategy Great, thank you. So Amazon's part of a global organization, and you probably would be having, uh, you know, uh, worst case scenarios already planned. Was that in place in India? Uh, was that in place? So I I want to just step back and and take the point exactly that you said, Anil, about being prepared. But it's actually much more than just planning for the worst case scenario. Um, so I think some of the work that we've done, for example, in say disaster relief in the last few years. or some of the work we do in scaled up situations like festive season or prime day all of these learnings came into place but we were facing something which was never known containment zones things will change suddenly people could not deliver people could not travel a whole bunch of things you know a lot of our workforces moved away a whole bunch of things right i think to me the learnings were one you can't suddenly develop to communicate or build anything I think what stood us in good stead was internally we had very strong mechanisms for the business and the uh, communications and all the teams globally and in India. Technology we had to remove certain things from our uh, platform. And and when you're talking about 200 million pl- plus products, you can't do it manually. When you said that only sell essential, and you have to communicate that. So so technology and everything coming together. Those tools were in place. Uh, communication tools. The fact that you know. I don't think we knew that we were planning for something like this when we launched our Devan blog uh, three and a half years ago. Then we started building out the social media channels and the campaigns and internal communications, working very closely in sync with external. I don't think we realized when we started broadcast as a tool, which allowed us to speak to our employees. But those tools played a huge role. So my first lesson: you cannot. just suddenly build things out you can do some hustling but always think long term um my second one nonetheless one would innovate when you know one is at a tight spot and people kept finding new ways um you know my um we were, we were just about to do an employee concert uh like i said we have 65000 with one of the top eight here like a uh, shankar mahadevan arijit the uh, kind of a person for our employees this was to be a live show which is something we do and um, that was to be in april we do it in three locations and then obviously everything just went away and we played with the idea of doing this um, you know um, something like uh, uh, online um, you know from their houses and things but then we said why would anyone want to watch any such musician um, from their house when they can see a lot of such similar events happening anyway a lot of you know such music um, uh, shows were happening um and also you could just go to youtube and watch right what's what's so exclusive uh for the amazon employee so instead my team uh, really came up with this brilliant idea of saying lockdown legends where they did a music reality show for 65000 amazon employees where people recorded and they kind of created you know original music instrumental cover versions whatever and then we got bini dayal to judge it and then we did like a lockdown finale which was broadcast to all of amazon india live where people performed from their houses the finalists benny performed from it he was a jury he gave the jury piece now that was exclusive because that was not something that employees were getting anywhere else so we innovated we innovated in how could we reach out to customers we innovated in how do we talk to people when there were no newspapers a lot of customers did not know why could we not deliver certain items or who was deciding what's essential and what's not for people suddenly forced to work from home headphones and laptops were essentials 
uh, smart devices for kids suddenly forced to study from home with smart essentials, but we could not deliver. There was a lot of customer anxiety, which we had to communicate to. So, so you know, finding mechanisms and ways to do that, we had to innovate constantly and find multiple different ways. That was my second. You have to innovate, you have to find ways. Third, people matter. Human beings are at the right at the top of it. We learned that as never before in multiple ways. Our first thing was our employee safety and our employees were right at the front line. It's not- so We had really cases, you know, people dying in warehouses in the US, which yeah. was spilled over right. here and- Front lines, right? Who are putting their lives for us. We have to make sure we give them the best. But also for all of us as teams, I think we've all seen that work goes on. We've all done very good work from homes. We're all missing meeting our colleagues, meeting our teams, meeting the people, the laughter, the camaraderie, the jokes. And finally, we did Prime Day. And you know, on, on Prime Day midnight, typically we're all in office. It's a high adrenaline situation. Everyone's waiting midnight when live, the program goes live. Everything was in place. We were all remote. Everything was great. We were all sitting in front of our laptops at midnight watching Prime Day about to go live. We all missed the excitement of being in that one room and feeling that adrenaline kick in. People matter. Yeah, Finally, yeah. that's what's going to take us back. So I think those are my three learnings. Fantastic. Great. So, uh, Parvez. Three learnings, three areas uh, for us at least. So the first one was about client partners and, uh, and therefore business solutions. So when, when uh, COVID struck us, um, a lot of us didn't know what it had for in store. And uh, what we realized essentially was uh, everything collapsed, timelines got reduced, new kind of media, digital media, all of that came into play. New world, new way of operating. How do we operate that? So one of the biggest learnings which we, which, 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 which we uh, sort of understood was the planning cycles are getting shorter. So while you may have a long-term strategy in mind, right now we need to deliver on the short term. And that's what the environment forced a lot of businesses to be more agile, more nimble. What are we going to be doing in the next one day, next one month, next three months? That was the window. And therefore, how can we help navigate clients in, in this uh, scenario? I think that was the biggest learning. In fact, we also created some sort of a planning model, which was about short term uh, planning for all our clients. Uh, that was the first learning. And Coming out of that was there were two parts, like uh, clients, their products and services couldn't be seen as opportunistic in, in this scenario. So on one side, we had, uh, we had the need to build up the empathy, the understanding, the availability of client services and products. On the other hand, we had to also ensure that the businesses are not impacted, which unfortunately didn't quite happen across uh, the entire across the economy or industry, but how can we partner with our clients to ensure that business continuity is maintained? So the first learning was in this space, how do we create solutions, uh, quick short-term solutions, immediate term solutions, while keeping the long-term strategy in mind. The second- is there such, a, such a thing as a long-term strategy for all of you today, for all your organizations, so, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, the now. Yeah, it's all about now. And that's exactly, the, at least for us, was the biggest learning. It's about now. Uh, in fact, uh, windows were as short as, okay, in the next three hours, we need to put, put something together to figure out uh, based on the kind of data which we have right now. Um, the planning model which we had created was now one month and three months, which, you know, at the outside, it was three months. So that's the biggest learning. The environment, the whole pandemic has shrunk things together, right? Sure. So, how do we plan for that? The second uh, biggest learning for us was, uh, which was again, a sort of a subset of the first one is keeping the stakeholders at the core of, of everything. So in our profession, we deal with multiple stakeholders, right? It's not just one consumer. It's right from government to policymakers, to business vendors, to consumers, to everybody. We've got such a plethora of stakeholders, which we are working with together on an ongoing basis. So the second greatest learning is how do we craft out communication 
with insights and trends which were specific to each of these stakeholders. So at let's say at the highest end, we had government or policymakers. They are, for example, continuously looking for partnerships. They're looking for funds, philanthropy. How can they ensure that they safeguard the health, which is first priority for them, and at the same time uh, ensure that the economy doesn't get into a, a bigger slump? So how can we partner with them? That's one example of an insight for a stakeholder. Or if you look at the consumer, if you look at the lady of the house or the family unit, uh, initially their entire issue was, am I going to survive this? Am I going to survive this when, when COVID first hit us? And then slowly over a period of time, it would be, how am I going to be managing my time over a lockdown? And now with lockdown opening up, how do I cope with, with the current scenario? So these were critical insights uh, which we need to keep in mind across our employees or colleagues, right? The biggest thing, the biggest thing which all employees have in their mind is more than pay cuts is, am I going to be let, let go of? So how do you reassure them? So across stakeholders, the, the biggest learning for us was how do we create communications, campaigns, content based on data, based on insights, based on trends. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, as, as, as a fallout of that, what is the kind of, medium that we use to communicate, right? So it again became digital first, uh, looking at the scenario of the own media. And therefore, you know, so on one hand was the insights and trend, the other hand is the execution through, the, through digital. Third learning, which was critical for us was uh, colleagues. Uh, and this was, and this is a, continues to be, uh, I think generally it continues to be a challenge. Uh, on one hand, like, like I mentioned earlier, the anxiety of am I going to be having a job or not? Am I going to be, you know, leave without pay and at the end a pay cut? Coupled with a change in environment, right? So the insight over there was that when COVID first hit, it was fantastic. Hey, I'm able to work from home. That's terrific. That's all always what I wanted. But as time passed, uh, and we all have read so much about this, the lines have started blurring between personal and and professional, right? And that is really impacting. So. You know, most of us would be living in reasonably bigger houses and stuff like that. But can you imagine a situation where there are four or five colleagues who are sharing an apartment or where you have a joint family where there's no space? So we had to reassure our colleagues and generally, therefore, the industry that how that we are with you and we are we are backing you. And that's the most important learning. Yeah, great. You know, on the agency side, you know, I believe. Clients would have cut back on spends as far as communications is concerned, or they would have said, "Oh, have they increased the investment during the crisis?" So, was your agency impacted? Were the other agencies on the panel impacted in terms of I think all of us having to having to right size yeah, to be yeah. able to? Yeah, yeah, all of us were impacted. There is no doubt about it. All of us have been impacted, and uh, uh, we all know that all of us have been impacted. We've been able for. I mean, I wouldn't want to be saying this, but MSL, for example, hasn't had a single pay cut, or we haven't let go anybody. Uh, and that's that's the other in, that's the other learning which we have. If you manage, if we are able to figure out our costs in a very in, in effective way, we can we can ride this wave for a significantly longer time. We don't know what's going to happen in the next month. But for us, again, um, a couple of us said that employee first. Yes, that's critical because they are because we are the people and they are the people who will really really matter to to ensure. Success or success or failure of a business. So three three areas, three learnings uh, for us. Yes. Great, Sheetal, From your side, uh, was did communication in terms of uh, were they cutbacks or the uh, organization continued uh, supporting communications? <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't get that. No, from the from the organization. Let's say from mm -hmm. Kalyan side and the management mm -hmm. side. Did they mm -hmm. continue to support communications in terms of not asking or to trim down and double up? Sure. So I think uh, uh, I can speak from a Flipkart perspective you know, right here for about two and a half years. Um, we're a very people-focused organization. The first thing that I think uh, came as a focus was uh, from leadership and from Kalyan and from everyone was to take care of the health and well-being of the employees. And when I talk about health and well-being of the employees, it's not just your corporate office, you know, I mean, 80% uh, of your workforce uh, is in the supply chain, right? Uh, 120,000 employees all across India. Uh, most of them working in locations, you know, which are, uh, uh, you know, which are the remotest locations in India. 
um, and everybody had apprehensions at that point in time, you know, whether you're a white collar employee in working in corporate offices or you're on the road delivering. Uh, when it hit, when pandemic hit, when you were looking at your business continuity planning and, you know, shutting down your offices, mandatory leave probably for a month or so, uh, you know, at that time, the thought process was different. But the first priority was the safety of the employees. Uh, you had to look at PPE kits. Uh, you had to teach people who are going out and delivering how to keep, uh, you know, their own hygiene and safety and well-being. And at the same time, uh, you know, assuring customers that even if essentials are being delivered through e-commerce, uh, you know, they're safe. Uh, because like I said, you know, there's a lot of fake news which is being floated around. There are apprehensions in the minds of your own employees and consumers. Um, so I think the first thing that came to our mind was that when there are apprehensions, you give you you have to maintain assurances, and these are not false assurances, you know. So your so has you have Kalyan coming and telling people that there's going to be no layoffs. <laughs> yes. So uh, we have a quarter, uh, you know, Flipster Connect that we do, do. and I think uh, uh, Kalyan, not only Kalyan, but the entire leadership came forward to talk to uh, you know employees. We had a first uh, about close to eight thousand employees joined in, uh, you know, through Zoom links that time. Um, so our uh, pr appraisals have happened on time, promotions have happened on time, uh, media check-ins have happened on time, EOP plannings have happened on time. And all this is because we have a culture which is people-focused. And I think uh, you were talking about learning from the pandemic. And I think the biggest learning is that, you know, if organizations have had culture where they've put people first always, you know, whether it is crafting your policies, whether it is... Uh, uh, you know, listening back to them, taking their feedback in and, you know, uh, drafting and re redrafting your policies. Mm -hmm. If you had that sort of a culture, uh, you know, no matter how big the pandemic is or how big the crisis is, people will come together, right? And the second fact is that, you know, I think which I have personally learned is that I think what's come forward is that even when you're working, uh, you know, far off remotely, some people have gone back to their hometowns and, you know, working with their parents and, you know, taking care of larger families. Uh, what's important is that, you know, you have people who are watching each other's back, you know, teams which are watching each other's back, whether it is top down or with, whether it is, uh, you know, within your own community, whether it is a matrix level, uh, you know, structure, but the fact that people are watching out each other's back that, you know, uh, you go out and we're watching you, you know, uh, so I think that's come out very, very strongly personally for me, we've had friends and colleagues, you know, who probably wouldn't have had chats with each other effort, you know, to come out and, you know, to basically show empathy, show compassion, uh, uh, you know, and talk about it, uh, you know, everybody's well-being. And uh, I think from our side, uh, I think to answer your question, leadership has been very, very inward focus, uh, you know, to talk to employees regularly um, uh, and, uh, you know, use all means of communication, whether it is your own app that you have, because Flipkart has about 250 million, uh, you know, registered user base. Um, everybody logs into the website uh, and to the app, you know, uh, at least um, once a day. So how can you use, uh, you know, that as a medium to communicate authentic uh, messaging? I wouldn't say storytelling because as communicators, you know, we say that, you know, we're doing storytelling. This, this uh, age has been of, uh, you know, I think factual storytelling, if I have to put it, and not fictional and not fairy tale storytelling, right? So uh, I think the first learning for me has been that the comms became more responsible and authentic and thoughtful. Um, everybody's way of dealing with crisis is very different, you know, uh, because our challenges are different. Uh, Parvez mentioned, you know, some people could be staying alone, you know, or staying in a PG. Their challenges could be completely different. Um, I may have a newborn I, I, and I could be dealing with it. My challenges could be completely different. So there's no single playbook to deal with it, right? Um, so you had to build context, you had to be thoughtful of what you're communicating and who you are communicating with. So for example, when um, we were talking to, uh, you know, our uh, delivery executives who we call wish masters, we did close to 4,000 trainings for them, you know, uh, in order to ensure that, you know, uh, when new WHO directives are coming there, you know, they're aware of it. But at the same time, you didn't want to set in a, you know, a tone of panic, you know, you wanted to tell them this was important. So context setting and the way you're communicating, um, uh, how thoughtful you're communicating, uh, I think uh, is- So that was not HR, that was communications which did it. 
Yes, I think uh, 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 we spoke about most of the departments coming together and working collaboratively. Uh, and I think that's something as a culture uh, which happens in Flipkart. We have crack teams, uh, you know, that come together. Um, so uh, people function uh, and uh, comms function work very, very collaboratively. Fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, great. Uh, moving on to Dipshika. Dipshika, yeah. your learning. So... <laughs> I'm driving if, yeah. It's a long way for everyone to get the turn, but as I said, we, we can learn from each other. No, no, absolutely. Just listen to each other. Wonderful, wonderful to hear what everybody's spoken about. And it resonates so well, actually, with I'm sure with each one of us, um, like some of my colleagues have talked about. Um, I think the three things that stood out for me personally um, and some of my colleagues also when we talk about this is the first one is communicating to multiple stakeholders. What did happen very early was because of the sudden panic of the lockdown, the first audiences that were communicated to were probably employees. And a lot of time, effort, energy, of course, went into the employee communication piece, which is much required. But what we also realized is you cannot ignore all the other audiences because you're so focused on the employee and the internal communication part. And that's when talking to governments, understanding what they're coming up with in terms of policy, talking to your financial stakeholders and analysts and looking at how are they viewing business, talking to your business partners, and of course, customers directly. And I think customers, we continue to do naturally, but some of the other peripheral audiences, we tend to forget. And depending on what kind of business sector you are in, you know, I have to say that uh, both uh, Minari and Sheetal were fortunate to be in the, the sector which was actually doing really well. E-commerce, as we know, stood out fabulously and was very strong. But on the flip side, there were sectors which were in serious trouble. If you look at the entertainment and you look at the entertainment centers or movie theaters, travel, hospitality, they suddenly went into a complete zero business. And, and I, I think you talked about this, Anil. Um, they, the first tendency was, oh my God, what do we even say? I mean, our business has pretty much come to a standstill. So to work with some of those clients and get them to sort of continue to communicate and talk to their various stakeholders saying, okay, it's about survival for us. And let's admit it, it is. But let's talk also about how do we then go from here? How do we talk about sustainability of the business? How do we talk about coming back with revival? Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, honestly, a lot of them couldn't even say, when will they come back into operations? You know, we have an airline client. Um, where, what do they say? When will they come back into operations, especially in the early days? So they have to wait for the government directives and so on. And similarly for hospitality. So in that scenario, communicating becomes even more critical and talking to all the multiple stakeholders. Uh, and when we're doing that, thinking about what is the purpose of my business? And I'm, am I communicating the purpose of why I exist? And what do I mean to my stakeholders and customers? Mm -hmm. And that message and arriving at that thinking is what I think took up a lot of time of very senior strategic leaders in business organizations, or at least those who we interacted with. The second one was digital first thinking, clearly. Uh, everything had to be done digitally first. And I think Parvez spoke about this, understanding data analytics and pulling out insights from what was a conversation that was going on in the digital space uh, became critical and you know we are fortunate that we had a very strong digital and analytics team who spends time looking at what are the conversations and what are the trends and so we were able to advise our clients on what is the conversation going on over there how do you manage that how do you respond to it how do you elevate it and that became critical for a lot of our clients because, I mean, you know, in the earlier days, you used to call it moment marketing, which is piggyback on a moment. But over here, it became even more essential and critical because you were actually addressing the current sentiment of the audience and therefore doing communication which is relevant to them and authentic to them. 
and i think one of the uh, dimple talked about you know this is not the time to be talking about the various awards and accolades that you may have won for some programs earlier or some you know some other milestone which may not really be relevant to the audience so thinking through and being clear of what do you want to communicate which is relevant to your audiences using digital first to do that the mm-hmm. third one and i have to say this with a smile i think the realization that 100% work from home is possible <laughs> and i say this with a laugh because you know at genesis uh, we experimented with work from home almost 10 years back and we we used to give work from home to a lot of our colleagues saying okay you know they had if they had a little baby at home or they had unwell parents or they needed to just you know take some study leave or whatever it was mm-hmm. and often we used to say that okay you know, we can only do it in bits and parts it's not something that can be given to everybody as a, a, a privilege to work from home it was a privilege uh, but the good part is we had actually done a lot of investments into technology we are completely virtual uh all our information knowledge everything is accessible from any time anywhere and has been so for the last 10 plus years so when we went into work from home like this overnight we had all people had their technology available to them they had their information available they had their knowledge available we had you know a microsoft teams which had been working and it been introduced four months back to our team so they were very comfortable with it they didn't have to struggle to say oh okay what do i do with this how do i learn this platform and zoom and so we went into it very very if i can say seamlessly and which is nice uh, so yes this realization that 100% work from home is possible teams are effective people are not goofing off but they're actually are doing their work and they're delivering well and so therefore trusting your teams to be able to do that and to the extent i can tell you anecdotally now anil when i ask my team so do you want to come back to office and do you think we should sort of start reopening office i have all but probably one or two people who saying yes we want to come back to office rest are all quite happy <laughs> doing the work from home yeah there are the odd cribs here and there on days of you know i don't have privacy and i have a child screaming in the background or my mom in law is beating down on me whatever it is but overall uh, this whole work from home has worked out quite well for us and i must say i'm yeah. proud of my teams to be able to work this yeah they've done a good <laughs> job thank you thank you so rohan and akshara after that your three learnings <laughs> so anil uh, plus one from parvez and plus three from dipshika is already done so i have one additional learning that i had to contribute i don't know whether you know, noticed but while dipshika was speaking i kept smiling because every time i said every point that she made i said okay there we go i have nothing more to say uh, but i think i'll just i'll, I'll try and see if there's a couple more learnings uh, I could probably, okay, if you have one, if you want to share one, then we no, can. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. I think one, the one more, most important one is obviously people that everyone's spoken about. I think that remains at the core. I think for most organizations, including ours. So I'm just going to. Yeah, you didn't have to lay off, let go of people, right? Or you were, you were, you were forced to let go and to we write. We haven't right? had a single salary cut. We haven't uh, let go of any employee. Uh, our whole focus has been to ensure that, and therefore we took certain measures in terms of how do we get. incremental revenues in because yes it it was tough in the initial quarter but we've not cut salaries no people uh, or everyone's with us still so it's it's we we've, we've held held our, but our recruitment pieces are there now possibly recruitment pieces are there yeah there are replacements but no new fresh recruitments at the moment we we'll evaluate that uh, having said that so plus one per ways and plus three dipshika uh, i think the ones that are probably back on what minari started with and i know that i've worked with minari and i'm and amazon before and i know that they they probably very well prepared for crisis and adversity so uh maybe minari will agree but i think in in many many ways what i experienced over the last 5 to 6 months working with clients is not all of them were prepared for it or not all of them were ready and i think there's a very big learning there because we try and advise clients to look at the worst case scenario over the last few years anil what's happened is that's kind of petered down because you didn't have anything significant happening and okay so it's it's a good to do right i think what's clear to me at least and from an organizational standpoint and to a client to advising clients is it's become back to a must do because there is a worse than a worst case scenario also possible i don't think this was planned for right 
and what does that mean and therefore i think somewhere if i had to take a learning from that worse than a worst case scenario that could stare at us uh, is looking at the equation of uh, possibilities and potential so there's huge potential for different possibilities it could be negative or positive in this case from a company standpoint the possibilities for the potential for a lot of negatives right you need to at least have some semblance of putting that process in place uh it is your point uh not sure whether you know this but during this entire covid time uh companies lost there were 120 fatalities across different industries uh they weren't prepared for lockdowns right so a lot of manufacturing sites when they either reopened or for instance the one of the biggest tragedies that you probably know of the industrial disaster uh they didn't know what happened during the lockdown so there were casualties during lockdown because you weren't prepared for a lockdown there were casualties when people got back to work 120 fatalities in the last 5 months that's a huge number and maybe we haven't heard as much being spoken uh, because yeah, yes one automobile company in aurangabad at the plant they had a lot of uh, infections and fatalities but i am i am talking about i'm not talking about fatalities from covid okay that is a different conversation altogether okay. i'm talking about fatalities arising from uh, production issues things like that uh industrial dis- it not dis- disputes uh mismanagement of the production process waste chemicals uh 120 fatalities that's a huge number right and nobody was prepared for that so i'm just saying that the potential for these possibilities is enormous for the for the, for a client for any kind of company to think about today you can't ignore it anymore you don't do safety for the because you have to do a tick mark i think safety must be done because it's required to be done in the context of what has transpired the second aspect of potential to possibilities really comes down to a learning from an agency standpoint so the first one was for the clients but i think the second one is for agencies i think all of us realize and i'm sure that my panel fellow pan- panelists will agree that the sheer potential for every possibility existed so what we thought was pos- like uh, Deepshika said, "Work from home is a reality. Yes, it is. But more than just work from home, the sheer depth of the kind of advice to the kind of problems and therefore the solutions that you had to come back, come out with uh, was enormous. And I, and I know for a fact that maybe a few months back we would have sat back and said, 'Ah, looks difficult. Ah, uh, right. There was no choice. You just had to find a solution. And therefore, potential for possibilities exists within all our colleagues, within us." This is a huge learning. So, from from a client standpoint, potential for possibilities is something they must plan for. But from our point of view, it's a learning that look, potential for possibilities just exists within us, right? Uh, so that's one takeaway. The second one from that, and and it's an extension to the first point, is the fact that look, uh, you'll be surprised. And let me just quote a statistic here. Uh, on an average, I did about one training a week, and I'm just saying an average, right? Over the last six months. Uh, I didn't have that kind of an average before. Uh, the amount of crisis mandates that we have done in the last six months is tremendous. Now the point is that you don't need to come to a stage where you're doing one last minute trainings, two you're doing last minute crisis management. I think clearly that preparation, that learning and development should be a continuous process because, and we do that kind of work with very few clients. more often than not people come in when when things are really bad and that's what we experienced in the last 6 months and i'm talking of clients which may not necessarily have been our own right so they probably are working uh, across sectors and they're coming in at this stage when it's late so learning and development and again learning and development from an employee standpoint we realize there's i mean that's that's like a given and that's why i'm i'm not going to illustrate that so learning and development is the other part i think every organization worth its salt needs to now figure out that that's this is you need to spend time in training your staff also what's happened is the pandemic made us realize that even if a leader or a ceo was one of those that thought that he could speak when it when he wanted to that day is gone i think the need for the ceo to be every leader to be visible and i say visible i'm not saying overtly visible but to be able to communicate communicate right uh, at times like that Uh, becomes critical and therefore they should be trained and they should be willing to you know go that extra mile to do it and the third aspect of learning is how do you process information i started by saying that look we were consulting because clients were seeking any kind of input at, at in the early stages right so i think there is 
a gradual shift that will happen within agencies within companies as well uh, for more generalists from an information standpoint i think we will be able to advise our clients only when you have a well rounded view so clearly what we've been communicating to our colleagues as well is that look it's time to now expand your horizon and when you look at it from an information standpoint the company and i'm i all the three learnings i will relate to company and to the agency like i've done with the first two i think on the third one is that the way corporate communications now sees information has to change i'm very certain that we will all go back in many ways to living like before some patterns may have changed forever maybe but in general i think we will go back right so how, but uh, that whole information consumption and how do you communicate from a from a communications team standpoint uh, will shift similarly on the agency side i think we are getting very clear that our folks now need to be able to be more consultative than ever before i'm not saying that we aren't or anyone in other agencies on but i think that uh, ability to sift through information make sense of it and to be able to advise possibly is going to be a lot greater uh, as as we come out of the pandemic so if i had to capture both from the corporate side and the agency side three learnings i'd probably focus on that what is the people to potential uh, conversation that we can do clearly need to be prepared the second is very clearly focused on learning and development as a consistent exercise and not when you need it and third is information is critical and how you view information is going to be uh, how you will succeed thanks for that kavita uh, or akshara let akshara come in now kavita can go after that i think uh, we've pretty much covered everything i think um, with regards to the pandemic i think more than learnings i think they've been very interesting reminders in life right and i always go back to the basics right is it it's macro over micro it's people economics is pointless without people right we've spoken about it we've spoken about change being the only constant i mean we take we've been reading about this for years we all know this but it's really a reminder you know and value based um, pretty much and i think for all the leaders here i think everybody would agree is that there's a no fear approach there's extreme ownership that we need to take you know and you have to lead from the front so i think from from both aspects i've kind of tried to delve on both from from a business owner perspective but also as a leader i think these were the three important learnings from my perspective right kavita from your perspective uh, in terms of you know also the industry there been there people are saying that there's going to be a downturn close to about 25 to 30% this year in the industry and secondly your learnings and then commenting on the comment i just made the made growth has gone for communications uh, it's actually going to be a deceleration more than the indian economy as in the first quarter Yeah. So you know, uh, it seems like it's going to be a, a a muted next year as well. This year is kind of a complete washout, but next year is going to be a muted next year as well. But uh, you know, there's no two ways about it, and I think everyone's kind of prepared for it. So in this kind of a scenario, you know, um, like we said that you know, when it came to essential services uh, or the healthcare industry, I think they weren't really as impacted in the initial days. They were because distribution was a big, uh, a massive, massive issue. Uh, but uh, I think now that's got sorted out. But uh, a lot of industries like the hospitality, travel and tourism, um, you know, the theaters, the the F and B industry, big time impacted, and uh, aviation industry, you know, and the uh, uh, and economies that were completely dependent on tourism, you know, so they are so badly hit. Now, in a situation like that, how what are they going to communicate uh, internally or externally? they are forced to do uh, you know job losses the pay cuts and job losses are absolutely normal for them because they don't have a way right they are they are they almost pushed to the brink of you know uh, kind of being extinct they aren't going to be remaining any longer so you know in a situation like that or in or industries like that and you know we've been working with a number of them uh, the dilemma is uh, do they communicate or do they not communicate and if they do communicate what are they supposed to communicate you know so in a situation like that i think it was it was very very difficult so the first learning that we had was that none of these uh, 
industries which were so badly impacted or organizations that were so badly impacted were prepared for it and actually nor were we nobody was prepared for covid nobody thought it was going to happen so you are you are putting in place uh, 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 some some measures to uh, because we don't know there could be another wave which could again lead to uh, uh, shutdowns and germany for instance last month showed growth this month is again slower yeah. so, so i i think the learning there was you know not to treat this as the end because it is not the end right instead to really focus rather than uh, focusing on uh, you know absolute negativity or thinking that this is doomsday to start thinking about how you can bring your business back on track you know so a lot of focus uh, when it came to the hospitality industry or for the aviation industry was really on focusing on uh, what maybe amazon and flipkart did very effectively you know in terms of you know how do you reassure the customer that you can still avail of the service or you can still fly you can still eat at a restaurant uh, and and not uh, kind of contract covid you know so a lot of the communication was focused on hygiene and safety you know so the first learning was that you know we've always been focusing on the product but here was a different dimension altogether and uh, i i think uh, we did that a lot very actively and i think that's going to be the flavor a lot of communication is going to be around it so for me that was one thing and uh, the other uh, dimension that we saw was that you know it was always more about and i am not going to speak uh, for uh, a few companies but for the larger larger lot of companies it was always about the organization about uh, about the product about the leadership but for the very first time i think what i've seen is a very huge sea change you know in terms of how can we participate or ensure that community is uh, you know impacted positively by our efforts you know so collaborating with the larger community has become not uh, not something that you do as a part of your co- corporate social responsibilities but as a part of your brand purpose now i'm saying uh, that you know a few organizations are already doing it were already doing it but i think what i'm seeing or what was our learning in the last 6 months of covid was a lot of organizations suddenly wanted to do it because they truly believed that they wanted to give back to their community they wanted to give back to their customers or to their you know to their immediate uh, stakeholders you know whatever it was you know and uh, the third one was that you know i think uh, if i'm not mistaken rohan said it but uh, you know while some organizations were very or agencies are by and large prepared you know we are we are fairly technology savvy you know so dipshika said this actually that you know we were we are all very good with our technology and you know we we know microsoft teams and zoom and we use a lot of video conferences but i can't say that for every client that i work with today they weren't really prepared so the challenge of uh, for them was first to deal with a market which was really shrinking actually the market had vanished overnight they didn't know what to do about their distribution networks because the world was on standstill and thirdly they didn't know when it's all going to come back on track now in a situation like that are you going to sit and communicate the the job of the agency is to come back and say yes you want to communicate right now this is the right time to communicate so what should you communicate how should you communicate is very critical and what is the role of technology so you know very often we were helping our clients uh, you know actually understand how they can you know use technology or whether it's a zoom call or whether it's a microsoft teams platform to communicate with their various st- stakeholders whether it was you know their internal sure. employees or whatever and also there was another uh, tiny little thing some of the clients which were some of the industries which were so badly hit they couldn't really afford to pay or their their dilemma was should they pay their uh, staff or should they pay the communications for you know so at that point in time in the truest sense of partnership we decided that we are going to work with them without actually expecting anything in return we had no clue whether they're going to be able to afford our services or not i think that's not i mean you know you can't be transactional at times like this so our learning was i think you need to sometimes go beyond your professional contracts and commitments and whatever else and actually show genuine genuine partnership and this was one of it this was one yeah. of those times so i think i don't know whether aman's given his learnings but i'm going to go on to him and ask him 
you know, now that the festive season is coming, we're in the festive season and it's coming back. So, you know, communications, launches, all that is going to come up again at the same time while we are still going through the pandemic. There'll still be news about people dying. So what should be the strategy for companies? For uh, uh, Amazon, it's clear. For Flipkart, it's clear because, they, you know, they've been constantly communicating. What should be the strategy and what's the impact? Uh, some people say there's still going to be more layoffs. Economy, there are two views. Economy is not going to really revive. Festive is going to be easy. But there are others who are saying it's going to really explode. The IPL has got its sponsors. Uh, so, you know, what should be, there's still a lack of clarity and un there's unsurety still. Uh, well, I think, I mean, so let's look at it into two parts to it. Um, you know, one is in terms of, we said in the, I think during this panel only, uh, you can't really plan for the future now. You know, we are almost, everybody's now looking at a very, very short term. Uh, whether, you know, the Diwali will be the Diwali the way we have seen it last year, don't know. Uh, whether the festive season will revive the sales, you know, we don't know. I think uh, from a from a from a execution side, from a strategic side, I think it has to look at different scenarios and be planned for any possibility which uh, may come in, because how the the virus, the current pandemic, will pan out over the next couple of months is unknown. Uh, whatever the modeling data which exist, the numbers are only gonna get uh, worse from where we are, and sure. if that happens we don't really know how this thing will do. Now, from the learning part of it, if we look at from what we could possibly do and is the biggest thing is that at this juncture, the question is, what is the criticality of what we bring to the table? And I think that criticality is what will decide for the businesses, do they want to invest into communication or they don't want to? Is it like business critical? Is it a must uh, to do? So I think at that time, the, the learning which I have seen emerging is that how do you showcase the relevance of what we are doing and connect that to the business impact part of it? It's not something which is just communicating for the sake of communication. It has to be something which needs to come in from the very simple that I am bringing in a business impact, whether it is sometimes safeguarding the business because you might be losing the business because of the situation, or I'm able to shape your market in a way, or I'm able to build a market, or in certain cases, I'm just sort of allowed to mitigate the risk which is coming along with the situation where we are in. I think that thinking as a part of the, the council which we need to provide, and I think Rohan did say that, you know, we need to play a more larger council role right now. We just need, don't need to say, okay, I'm gonna do 10 things for you. We need to combine the council along with the uh, the tactics which 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 will be which are adaptable to the today's world we need to adapt to today's world you know if it's digital let's do digital if it is an hybrid model we need to go in hybrid because i have seen certain companies who have done their events which is a hybrid model you know bit digital bit physical because everybody is just trying to figure out what yeah, yeah. September to be 21st, you can start your 100 people gathering so press conference can happen from 21st september you needn't go do digital you need not, or but then there are, you know, team members who may say that I'm not comfortable going out right now because it also has its own psychological aspect and you need to respect uh, the team members in terms of what their point of view may be. So it's not like a completely uh, a linear equation. It has a different, uh, you know, layers to it, which needs to be uh, taken into account. So I think the point about adaptability, about agility, about different scenario mapping and ensuring that we are able to look at the scenario as it evolves and build our strategy and action plan accordingly is I think which is the biggest thing which will happen and I think it will just make all of us a better professional. I'm just looking at the fact that over the course of the last 20 years I've been in this industry and what we have learned in the last six months might be much more than what we may have learned in the last 20 years that how do you really be so agile, so adaptable, so dynamic at the forefront, use technology, do everything which is completely done in a very, very new and a different manner altogether. Yeah, yeah, in the world of communication that's changed today, uh, bloggers, you've got to deal with influencers, you've got to deal with bloggers, you've got to deal with fake news, you've got to deal with, deal with uh, and you know, agility was anyway coming upon us because of the fact that fake news was spreading so much. Twitter is a place where somebody passes a comment, there's a digital team which is responding, then how does the agency play a role? How does the communications department respond to that? So your world is anyway complex. 
all of you all this is to you all that's that's true and i think i think no, that's not just to you aman anybody else can say. no no as i think and i think that's true also yeah. because from an industry perspective as just you know as a and i think i'll just sort of you know deep shika talked about the pr industry association which all of us are part of and i think that bit of public relation as a business critical element is true because the way the pr firms work in this situation is something which will remain the most relevant thing for the businesses in the coming months yeah there's also paid uh, native content which is coming in which you'll need to support publications at this time because uh, and management's need to understand that because publishers are going through a hard time themselves so you know there's there's all those things who wants to step in you know step in and address it whoever wants yeah, to so in my view it will always be a combination of uh, paid in whichever form and earned right they serve different functions uh, in a lot of aspects so um, i mean that will never die um, to my mind um, what native content or what advertising delivers uh, is significantly different from what we deliver there might be a slight overlap in certain places so they have to coexist Uh, yeah, but in communications department, sometimes native pieces becoming part of communications rather than from the advertising agency. Yeah, so that's what we can do. Step in on this one for ways. Yeah, sure. Right. Uh, sorry, because this is something I feel very passionately about. And as Anil just said, yeah, I don't think it's a marketing or advertising piece only. In fact, I think we as and, and you dealt with me saying this in an earlier role when I was just starting out on that track. And my current company, uh, I, I think about it even more than I did in my previous role. because uh, i remember that three and a half years back i i joined amazon four years back and three months after my joining um we were trying to set up the devan blog as we call it for india and our global team said oh we don't have india on the road map right now um and we said we are going ahead and building it anyway we don't have the time to wait and today and and and, and you know while covid saw a lot of people noticing that we realized the potential of it in the previous years for example the festive season last year we ran a campaign uh, for diwali called the house on wheels uh, which created fabulously authentic content that people like brand equity actually called it out as our advertising campaign to to uh, you know some of uh, the other e-com sites using celebrities and so on um we've had um need to arm model one organic um you know campaign for alexa on on our campaign which was purely pr led for valentines day where he worked with his partner uh you know because he prepared a valentine he used alexa to kind of do a valentine for his partner so i passionately believe that we have to own this piece about creating authentic content and uh getting closer to uh, our end consumer our audiences our employees uh, media will always remain an important part of it whether it's print whether it's um, online whether it's you know that will remain and I, i think that's going to morph in many ways as well globally and in india and we're seeing those changes so to me i don't think it's about earned and paid i think we're beyond that debate about earned and paid i think it's about looking for creating authentic content and then finding various channels and various places to use that and some of it might be paid some of it might be non paid some of it is in your own channels some of it is in pure social media um, i think some of the regional media is doing some great uh, work in terms of you know taking our messages and for their audiences and their readers you know um, uh, for a lot of our covid messaging we worked very actively with journalists across tamil nadu and delhi bhaskar and you know rajasthan and gujarat to actually talk to so i don't mean to kind of cut you per ways but the reason it matters to me is i think agencies i think that's one of the big changes that we as custom clients are expecting from agencies to bring in a more holistic um um servicing where you know the storytelling or the narratives are built together uh, and not necessarily siloed as traditional media or content and so on and this is something which i i feel very strong so, that's exactly the point i was making because uh if you go back to what i had mentioned it is about cracking the trend or the insight which is media agnostic and then crafting out the message and then depending on which is the best way to uh, propagate that message will depend on what you want to achieve right so they have to coexist 
a lot of people have been saying it's a death of television advertising but hey it's not it can never ever die all elements of communication have to coexist and now so even more because that's what the environment is doing to us right it has collapsed everything uh, at the end of the day the consumer or the stakeholder doesn't really care how is it being communicated to him or her okay i mean there are like it's getting more and more complex right uh, but it depends on the mindset of the consumer or the stakeholder what is the kind of content she or he wants to engage around and how how does that come to her or him so yeah, the, the, the content is becoming so plural today you have you know news journalists who left organizations and they become outlets themselves so there are you know so therefore the challenges before you all as in communications have, have multiplied and magnified social media uh then uh, influencers or who are, who are, who are setting up their own channels then you've got the television then you've got print then you've got digital outlets they're proliferating so uh i think data technology artificial intelligence machine learning all those are going to be play a very important role as far as communications is concerned for all of you all and if you guys don't buck up and learn that learn the skill sets in revival times it's going to be challenging for you all when you know when the economy comes back you know i want to jump in here anil uh, you've hit the nail on the head uh, learning for us is critical so we know that yes digital is the way we need to go but how do you create that content which will ride on digital platforms and i'll come to the paid earn bit uh, discussion later but i think the first part of creating that content and using technology to create some compelling content that's exactly what we are doing today and we are doing more and more of it so when we are saying think digital first that's what that means that think about how will you put this out on a paid medium earned medium shared medium all our social channels are actually shared mediums and then your own owned mediums also and you know uh, mina you talked about the blogs and you have your own websites and you have your own ways of uh, uh, communicating further all your own channels also so i think as you're completely right as pr i don't think it's press relations anymore we are way beyond that and i think people need to realize that and understand that it is not that traditional earned media story only that we are talking about we are clearly talking about communication which transcends all the various media today and goes out in the form of paid earned owned and shared and at the heart of that always lies what we've always talking about is do you understand the pulse of your audience and what they want to hear from you or what they want to understand from you and i think that's where a lot of our time should be spent on understanding the data and audience you know just earlier you were asking that question on the festival and i was thinking about that a lot of the data surveys that are uh, being done today and the analytics are actually pointing out that in the next 3 months there's going to be a lot more buying it may not be around your classical f food and that kind of space but actually going back to diwali traditional the people buy furniture people buy consumer electronics they want to do up their homes and i think the very fact that they've been spending so much time in homes they want to spend on that and a lot of data is actually uh, showing that already the other interesting bit is agri has been a sector which has done really well sure. as we've seen right so interestingly the tier 3 cities are coming up beautifully and the kind of buying behavior that is expected to come from there is going to be i believe quite an eye opener and i'm i'm sure all my e-commerce colleagues here will know a lot more about it and i think minari talked about you know uh, going into language and regional uh, 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 areas and so on that's exactly the new india the rest of india so i think we also need to think beyond our classical metro english speaking mainline business but we need to really start talking to the rest of india also and uh, if agri is going to be the torch bearer of revival then maybe that is the india we need to be speaking to more of Yeah. So these are some of the things that, to, to your point, we have to learn more, and I think we have to constantly be on top of our data and analytics and our thinking, and that's what we should bring to the table. No, and your tracking strength. mechanisms, all of you have to change Absolutely. your tracking. I mean, it's it could be a your influencer in a 
small little town. Thankfully, TikTok is not there. It was Roger your father. Because there were so many of them. Uh, but other, others are coming up. Yeah. So you guys will have to be tracking, measuring, monitoring. Yeah, so there are, for example, tools which, um, you know, we subscribe to uh, on an ongoing basis, which, uh, you know, if you actually look at the conversations which are happening today and you track them down, uh, and, and, you know, you can lock, you can latch on, you can come from anywhere. It's not only the urban uh, centers or metros. Uh, and like the Chika was saying, or Minari was saying, and a couple of us were saying, the revival is coming from the semi-urban, rural, agri, uh, areas. I know a couple of folks who are heavily into uh, agri promo, mm -hmm. promoting agri products, and they are having a field day. Uh, they are having a field day. So the green shoots, which I mean, of course, the auto auto sector seems uh, seems to have a little bit of a revival. The agri se agri sector is growing like nobody's business. Essentials are growing like nobody's business. Uh, the FMCG sector is doing well. Uh, Ecom is doing well. Uh, Edutech is doing well. There are, there are classical digital first sectors which are doing well. I mean, White Shark just, you know, Karan Bajaj just made 800 crores uh, mm -hmm. in a matter of two and a half years. He was okay. heading Discovery a few months ago and he was, a, he was an author. And so he's done well. But coming back again to the question of communications teams getting more budgets to track, to be able to work in this new world which has exploded suddenly and agencies coming up to scratch were already... A lot of the content creation piece either has gone in-house or it's going to social media agencies. Uh, you know, a lot of the influencer money which could have come to you all has gone elsewhere. So the evolution of the agency has to happen and uh, the communications department need to be able to get more resources. Is that happening? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take that one, Anil. Um, you know, um, at Pyramil, what we've done and the corporate uh, team is we've already started even before COVID. We, we actually anticipated lot of cohesiveness in, in the kind of communications that we were actually meting out across businesses and some are, you know, consumer facing, right? That has a very different metric, different uh, style of communications. A lot of our businesses are B2B. So it's also dependent on the uh, sector you're in and the kind of audiences you're uh, working with. But what we did, um, you know, about almost two and a half, three years back is we started uh, amalgamating and bringing together all of these comms functions. So for example, digital, social media, uh, PR, content, content across both internal as well as external, and brand communications and marketing events, awards, all of that has come together and sits in one particular function and that's ours, right? Oh. Um, I think, and this I've said, you know, way before, um, you know, COVID started is that there will be a huge change in the way comms is viewed and how comms functions in the days and months and years to come. There will be blurred lines between each of these functions. It will obviously evolve. And like you said, the metrics are uh, evolving as well. The dynamics of the industry that we're dealing with, media, also the kind of engagements that we're uh, currently engaging in and the way it will evolve will be drastically different. And therefore it will need that much more cohesiveness cohesiveness and a very different approach and it has to be seamless both internally so that you can have a unified one voice across all of the mediums and platforms that you work with now whether you sort of have seamless working or it all comes under one cohesive uh, uh, you know a unit or a vertical within the organization that you know could be um, individualistic um, uh, you know uh, individual companies might want to look at it, you know, how it suits their purpose, but there will be blurred lines. And Minari said this as well. We should not look at marketing and PR as two different, um, you know, um, areas of impact because unless they are married and they work together cohesively, there could be marketing aspects that you pull in and you put into PR and digital and, and vice versa. Very often, I think comms can actually create assets and content that can go into branding and marketing. So there's a lot of that that will emerge. And I think many organizations are already taking cognizance of this fact. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, and you mentioned this, that will you have more budgets? I think the budgets will now be, you know, budgets whilst now all of us are going to be more made more accountable. So we will bring in much more deeper analysis, metrics, and, and you know, most agencies that send out coverage reports, you know, at the end of the month, those 
clippings, those will perhaps have to really reinvent themselves. What will really make sense is how are we creating impact on business outcomes, right? If you haven't already been doing that, we will have to, as an industry, evolve our metrics and our uh, reportings to the, you know, to the business on how is it that all that we do, what does it really mean in terms of business income? I think we're going to be, um, you know, we're going to be asked to be much, much more accountable than what we were before COVID times. So not that budgets will be cut. And even if they are, um, I, I think the question is, with the budgets that you have, even with the budgets that you have, even if they don't cut it, you will be asked to be more accountable with very clear data. And therefore, uh, you will work with many more agencies and many more um, you know, support functions will actually emerge for comms. I see that happening already. I get it, but if these guys, the communication agencies don't evolve, uh, there will be challenges and other people will take over those pieces of the business. Actually, I had a slightly... So, also, yeah, yeah, let's somebody... Yeah. I disagree with you because uh, all, all, all my colleagues sitting uh, over here would um, would uh, like like how I'm mentioning would say that all, all the stuff we are already doing right so if we, uh, the data 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 and analytics digital listening drawing out trends and insights uh, subscribing to uh, various platforms to call out data having various functionalities within the organization, ranging from consumer engagement to uh, content production to um, uh, citizenship to employee engagement, it's already being done uh, as we speak. And I'm sure everybody on, in, on this panel would agree with me. So Is I would do. Then why are, the, why, are, why are social media agencies, why are content units coming within the, uh, within the uh, uh, you know, companies? Godridge has set up its own content studio. Where they're creating content, which is going on. on. The philosophy of the organization. There are several large organizations globally who prefer, uh, for example, uh, looking at uh, having having an in-house uh, team who manages social media because they believe that the pulse of the organization and what the organization stands for will be better understood by employees internally. I don't think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, also, I, if I can add, you know, to your point, Anil, and what Parvez is saying, I think the more evolved PR agencies, and that's why we're calling them actually ourselves more like communication agencies or communication partners and consultants today, we're doing a lot of this already. To your point, social digital is big. It's almost 25, 30% of our revenue actually comes from social digital and integrated marketing and which includes content creation and so on. So there is no one size which fits all. It's not that every company should outsource it to a agency. Some companies are happier outsourcing the whole thing. Uh, or some are saying, okay, we'll keep one part of it and you help okay. us. There are some companies who actually say, you do the thinking and the consulting with us we will do the execution. And I find that a very interesting model. So they actually trust us to look at the data and the conversations and come up with the uh, ideas and the content and what should be the messaging. And then we give that to their in-house teams who actually do the posting up and do the conversations because that's a fairly intensive 24 by 7 role. So there are some companies who are actually doing that also. They're splitting it up. So there are different models which are emerging. And I think a lot of uh, the others have also spoken about it. Um, it's incumbent upon us to do our best and make the best of this, right? Mm -hmm. And I would agree to Minari as a hard stop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, point. One, point. Point. You one point to you know, something which we're talking about. A lot of times I find it challenging. And this is across teams. This is not agency or corporate or anything. A lot of social media content becomes very marketing type content. And to me, to Dimple's point, yes, I mean, uh, I do think there are a lot of things we can play with marketing, but I also think we are a very different team because while we have a lot of impact on business outcomes, our biggest rule is corporate reputation. Yeah. And the kind of content that we need for corporate reputation and to me, that's one of the big filters or parameters or tenets, as we call it in the Amazon lingo, that we use. That that's one of the tenets as to what's the content that the marketing team is uh, creating, posting, making, and what is it that we're making? Because we're responsible for corporate reputation. 
and that's talking to a lot more broader or broader audience a bigger issues and not just transactional trying to sell things we do sell things you know it's like that we do make steel kind of a thing so i think it's important and that's where i think agencies need to help us as companies in respect we will have some teams for various reasons internally but the amount of work to be done on this is so large that campaigns would need to be long term and planned with this in in in, in vision and then look at like what the, what does it mean for social or own channels or influencer all of it put together you know impact on policy makers and so on and that's the piece which gets missed in the kind of content which gets created because we have to, and that's why we are yeah, uh, rohan you you just standing at come on step in about being very um um authentic which is perhaps what we used to in old days good old days when we all started out differentiate between marketing and pr that we are the authentic we doing organic that's where our, our strength comes in that we doing organic storytelling and how do we really start building on that organic storytelling irrespective of whether you pay for it or not build that authentic voice and i think that's where we have a certain expertise across agency or corporate that we must build on yeah but i'm telling you video is going to play a large role ron i'm just going to step in and then you can step step in again video is going to play a large role with the new millennials who probably are not reading as much as uh, before so that's again a skill set which is going to be needed by by communications agencies not pr agencies sanil i i oh, sorry see dipshika and and parvez kind of stepped in quite strongly because you almost made a leading point uh, or a reference there and i was just observing uh and i i i don't think i have anything more to add to what they said i think i would just i would just say that one it's an evolving model and uh, when you make one reference point you're missing out a larger picture right so you made one reference of a company and each company will choose a model that works for them and it's evolving tomorrow they might change that model right and we've seen that happen in the past and therefore i want to take a step back and say what you refer to has has been happening for the last 5 years or so we we've struggled the Uh, struggling with this aspect of this is coming that is coming this will change that and the fact of the matter is in the last 5 years we've all changed we've all evolved right okay. uh, and we've all been able to service our, cust- our our customers and our clients so the fact remains that models will keep evolving and you could keep questioning are you ready uh, the fact yeah, so remains that for me artificial intelligence devices tools machine learning you need to have all there so the point is uh, the simple point is that if you step back uh what you refer to today was the same kind of allegation or question mark that was raised 5 years back and even at okay. that point in time most agencies were prepared for it were already planning for it uh and if you see today it's it's similar we've reached a stage where you could put more question marks so where does it evolve when it evolves we will all evolve together because the fact remains that most firms uh, many firms such as us are already far ahead in the learning curve as well we already adopt some of these technologies we adopt some of the uh uh so in fact we even adopt some uh, pick up some of the firms that work in these spaces globally right so there are learnings already that we are picking in so i think making a reference point of one would probably be a little unfair sure. i think you have to look at a larger picture and in the larger picture i can tell you one thing on behalf of everyone here is that we have been consistently evolving and i don't think that's going to change ever so any client and a client expectation i think minari kind of elicited some of that uh it once it evolves you'll find that the agencies catch up if they're not already there so i right. think rest assured on that aspect i i, I feel fairly confident and I, and i know i can speak on behalf of everyone else on this panel as well so i'm sorry if i've spoken for everyone but no no i, think, I like to, I, love, i like I to make it. a point probably yeah. anil just once yeah. i think i personally look at you know what you mentioned whether it is the social media whether it is twitter facebook uh you know some of the other things that you mentioned i personally look at them as tools to deliver something like a means to achieve something <laughs> uh and i think as communicators your means to achieve uh, i think minari mentioned is uh uh build corporate reputation uh, build a voice for customer build a voice for your brand and you know each tool does that very beautifully or in its own sense in a in a different way so there'll always be agencies there'll always be experts who'll be able to deliver that for you but i think the central process the central thought process is saying that this is what we want to deliver will always come from the communicators you know sure. 
that's what it remain at the heart of it, i feel you know you're at the agency or you're on the other side of the table Fantastic. yeah i, really I just want to add one last point because i think rohan sent out a message saying that and i think uh, minari minari also has to get away so uh, just one last thing i'd like to actually endorse what sheetal is saying you know uh messages uh, are really at the crux of it at the center of it all mediums actually don't matter earned paid digital tv whatever it doesn't matter you know at the end of the day actually we think it we think it uh, through in that way but your customer is not you know i mean for them it's just another touch point you know so whatever we are saying you know print tv or whatever that's just i mean a format right for them what really matters is the fact that you know what is the message that we are trying to get out to them and are we striking that right balance of you know managing or ensuring that the corporate reputation is taken care of as well as getting that you know promoting a product or you know really talking about a service that we are providing so as communicators our job is very simple you know and at lintas we practice it day in and day out you know at the center of everything that we do is what is the message that we are trying to send out and what are the various disciplines you know whether it's advertising so we come together around a brand problem or a brand uh, opportunity and we then center around what is it that we want to communicate which discipline works on it and can deliver on it best you know so for us for agencies like us i think we are completely ready uh, evolution will continue happening and coming together better will continue happening so yeah i guess okay last it. words because uh, you know those last words all of your each of you can give your last words okay. i've done so i think that. not the last word but sort of taking back to where the conversation started and i think that is is the communication what we do is it an essential is it something which is you know happening is the critical function and i think that's something which has emerged quite strongly from this conversation the communication and its role whether it is crisis or is it post crisis will remain a business critical function and there the opportunity is only growing it's growing just because the channels are growing it's because the ask of the client is growing because they are sort of looking at the communication firm to do much more than what may be happening 5 years back and within that therefore the industry and its different members all of us at maybe at a different stage of evolution some of them may be a little ahead some of them may be sort of doing a catch up but i think this is what would change the way the communication will happen in the future i think the agencies like us who all of us who are on this you know panel and i think you know even our you know sort of corporate communication people would sort of watch for it that this relationship will only become stronger uh, in the coming years and we will be able to deliver more and more impact at the business level uh, using the right way of creating content and then disseminating content anyone else minari before you go i think um, this this is something which many of us already believed in but this is something which is i think come true for a lot more organizations as a realization we as people who uphold corporate reputation can influence business to do the right thing and that was never more true than now i think companies were beginning to understand this in the last few years but if there's one thing that this you know very difficult situation has shown doing right by employees doing right by partners doing right by customers doing the right thing i think we are people who can influence and to me that's the like the best take away from all of this yeah deepshika uh dimple all of you each of you all you know yeah i have two things to say one don't think of your pr agencies as media relations or press relations agencies i mean that's like living in the dark ages we are truly today integrated communication agency so that's i think the most important one and the second one equally important is we need to use our skills and our influence in communication to actually really do some good work out there uh we need to participate very actively in this whole bit about brand purpose corporate purpose to help solve some real problems of the environment of the economy and of the industry and of individuals i think uh we should all pledge that we would want to use our skills to actually help make the world a better place okay yeah i'm going to second that completely because you know uh, truly uh, you know it, it was earlier maybe the communications agencies which felt that way 
but I've never seen an environment which is more uh, supportive. What I can see very, very clearly is that, you know, your clients or client organizations truly, truly believe this now. And it's not just, you know, uh, just not just not lip service. They truly believe it. And, and I think if there is any time that's better than this, uh, I mean, I'd be surprised. Because right now it's coming from a place of belief on both sides, both the uh, the client organizations as well as the uh, agencies. So, so yeah. truly endorse that one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let Let me just uh, take a go at that, uh, Anil. Um, I think you know, um, irrespective of whether you're in the on the agency side or whether you're an in-house corporate uh, communications professional, I think it's true that we are um we're we're actually focusing on corporate reputation and that makes us brand custodians um and whatever the medium platform you know even those will as time evolves will blur but what would still ring true is are we solutionaries are we finding solutions to to instances and to dynamics that might pop up as they have in the recent past. Are we finding solutions and creative solutions, innovative solutions to address those and still uphold um, corporate reputation, brand purpose? Um, and, and are we agile enough to do that, right? And how does agility come in? How do you remain um, focused on innovation and creativity. Again, to your point, Anil, I think all of us as an industry, whether it's in the uh, agency or comms, internal comms teams, we will need to upskill and upgrade and think beyond pure PR and media uh, if we haven't already been doing that. I think much more upskilling and training and learning will evolve in the days and months and years to come and how well we can work as teams across agencies, across uh, newer uh, you know, partners, and how do we re remain compassionate uh, through all of the communications that we push out? I think uh, the world has now evolved into a more authentic, more focused on authenticity and compassion. Um, compassionate com communications to me will hold a uh, much greater sway in the things that evolve in in terms of deep fakes and you know uh, paid um, platforms, therefore, to remain um, authentic to your brand and holding the mental of brand custodian, we will really need to be the harbingers of change within and without the organization. Yeah, Akshara, your point. Any last points? Um, no, I think I could. I completely agree with Dimple. I think uh, you know. Are you in a salon? Are you in a restaurant? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm on on the Roro on my way back from Alibab doing a client recce. So that's all multitasking. And uh, sorry, that's why I removed uh, the video aspect. But I think this was a great conversation. I think communication is more critical than it has ever been before. And even if you were here taking a quick look around, you will realize that consumer sentiment is definitely picking up. And, um, you know, um, Thanks, Anil, for making this happen. I thoroughly enjoyed everyone's uh, contribution. It was lovely meeting each one of you. Thanks. So, uh, Rohan, Aman, Parvez. Let me just uh, close in because I heard of quite a few words of uh, cohesiveness that I have uh, and the credo that we have, we solve. I think if you go back to just those two words, I think that's, that's the answer there because if you more than ever before i'm saying a cliche but more than ever before i think you need to be in the business because it's there's there's multi-dimension and if you can observe what's happening be in that business and look at what's the problem to solve then all of what you're talking about anil and some of the allegations that you made there were no allegations <laughs> you, this is provocation this is this is provocative questioning you should yes. be on arnab's you should be on arnab's show yeah, yeah. Then you will I'm, understand. I'm I'm just being I'm just being sarcastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so some of the leadings that you had, I think it gets sorted because I think every agency is prepared for it. We all have models, we all have <clears> a solution. <throat> but I think you can't solve if you don't go and figure out where the problem is, right? And I think once you know that, uh, you you got it all sorted. So I think that's where it is. That's where to me the evolution is going to come from. We're all ready. I think you just need to go back and relook business. So, so primarily, I think for me, the way I see it is just about rethinking 
and therefore relooking what that content is going to look like if i had to just in a nutshell compress it and tell you those those are the two words for me yeah anyone last words who's not had his uh, last i think anil from my side i think it's more now philosophical here i think we discussed business which is a strategies but i think the the biggest aspect well, I mean, which we need to look at is that irrespective of what happens around pandemic no pandemic i think jays just remain hopeful should be positive about life we should just continue the way it is and should be i think much more looking beyond the you know the business numbers sometimes i think this has also talked to told us that as a humanity as a uh, and as as an individuals as a as a community we all need to be uh, focusing on a much larger thing you know we discuss purpose for our clients but i think each of us in our own small bit could really work towards a purpose you know whether it is you know looking after our team mates whether it's looking after the the mental health part of it trying to bring in a balance in life uh, you know through any other aspect i think this is a time for really to you know have a very very positive you know attitude towards life and not just for yourself but also for the people around you fantastic shita last words you have another your last words yeah i think uh, uh, rohan mentioned that he was a bit sarcastic so i'm going to talk about the word compassion for between you anil and between rohan <laughs> <laughs> i like that <laughs> Yeah. yeah but 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 again think, for the record yeah. before you speak before you speak definitely <laughs> these are not my views i will share my views with you on a call after this rohan <laughs> yeah oh, i think no, I, 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 was just, i was just i was pulling each of or both of you you know uh, together to kind of yeah. make this point i think personally yeah. for me two points one um i think aman mentioned about the teams um i think your agencies are equally your team uh you know prepared not prepared under prepared over prepared um good points bad points having compassion coaching each other uh, we owe it to the industry that we are in together right you know so i think uh, give it back to each other uh, uh, that's very very important um as communicators it's important that we can minari mentioned before she left that i think it's important that we can tell the businesses to uh, you know to do the right thing that's important uh, in my view being seen doing the right thing is equally important or maybe more crucial than it, than it ever has been and i think that's where this entire fraternity comes together uh, to bring it to the forefront fantastic parvez last words yeah so um, i'm i don't know how to say this but i've been on both the sides right i've been on the advertising side i've been on the client side and now for the last 10 years in uh, msl so publicis wpp all of that my view point is that the function so there are conversations which we always have that hey look at the advertising guys or look at the paid media guys see where they are and see where we are i think the first of all the functions and the roles which both of them both of us play the advertising part or the paid media part and what we play are, are completely different at least that's the way it's evolved in our country we are more aligned currently towards corporate reputation we play a very different role advertising plays a different role and i'm just saying this from first hand experience um so that's that's the most important uh, part i i don't think we are competing with the advertising folks where we are concerned with the where corporate reputation is is is, is concerned or the role which we play is very critical to the juncture to the place we are in right now the role of comms is extremely important because the people out there all stakeholders businesses investors stakeholders are seeking a constant reassurance are are seeking credibility a conversation that's the kind of content that's the kind of engagement they are they are seeking yes advertising is going on and we are seeing that you know when uh, covid started the uh, the advertising was all trying to relate to the what's happening around covid and now look at it in the last four or five months it's changed right it's getting back to its old ways our role is critical like like i said and that's the opening statement which i made as part of this panel is about credibility it's about reassurance and that's very different role. i think so that's the net take out from this conversation that's what we need to be focused on and that in today's day and age is much bears much more significance than what it would have probably born let's say a year back so yeah that's that's my point thank you. thank you anyone else sorry i didn't want to interrupt if somebody was saying something no no i was just acknowledging good one to parvez 
Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's been a pleasure chatting with you all. And these are not my views, again. My views are totally different. My job is to ensure that I get the best out of you guys, uh, whether it's a provocative question or whether it's with a kind uh, pat on the back. But thank you. You have all been very forthright. And I think it's been an amazing session from a bunch of excellent communicators. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Anil. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.